Hello, welcome back to Algebra 1. Here we're going to finally talk about the important topic of multiplying real numbers. And um, in fact, actually multiplying and also dividing real numbers, negative positive numbers, is actually easier to do than adding and subtracting them. So you can breathe a little bit of relief there. Uh, and I will promise you that it is the case that multiplying numbers, negative positive numbers together, the rule is actually easier to remember than adding and subtracting. So that's a good thing. Now let me show you really what that rule is and then we'll do a bunch of problems. So you have two numbers. One of them is called A and one of them is called B. And basically I want to teach you what the rules are to know what to do when you're multiplying A and B together. Um, and so we want to know what the result of A times B is. So we're taking A, which is a number, times B, which is another number. Okay, so there's a couple of different cases, right? What if A is positive and B is also positive? This would be like 3 times 4, 2 times 7, regular old multiplication that you've learned forever and ever. Well, if you have two positive numbers multiplied together, the result's always going to be positive. That's what you learned back in second or third grade. All right? Um, now, if you have A that's a negative number and B that's also a negative number, this is the part that's not so easy to kind of kind of visualize, but it's something that you will remember because you will do it over and over. When you take a negative number, multiply it by another negative number, you will always, always, always get a positive answer. It's always going to be a positive answer. And uh, we could talk about why, we could draw a bunch of pictures, but at the end of the day, you're not going to be drawing pictures, you know, and mental images when you're doing multiplication. You just need to basically remember this. Some things will spend more time on the why, and this is not really one of those. When you have negative times negative, it's always going to give you positive. You're going to do it so many times, it's going to be second nature. All right? Now we have another case. What if we have A as being a positive number times B, which is being a negative number? So they're different signs, okay? When that happens, when you take A times B, you always, always, always get a negative answer. Now, this is why it's actually easier, because if you remember back to addition and subtraction, you had to think about which one A or B was the bigger absolute value, and the sign of the answer kind of, kind of was involved in that. But for multiplication, and later on for division, it's going to be the same thing, it doesn't really matter the size of A or the size of B. It just matters the sign. So if they're different signs like this, then you're going to have a negative answer. And the final one is if you have A being negative and B being positive, you will always get a negative answer. So this is actually really important, and this is, this is all of basically all that you have to know when it comes to multiplying negative positive numbers, or what we call real numbers um, in algebra. So to summarize the rules, it's very simple to remember. When you're multiplying two numbers together and they have the same sign, whether those signs are positive or both negative, if they both match A and B, then you always get a positive answer, always, no matter what the, the, the size of A and the size of B is. If the sign of A and B is different, either A is positive, B is negative, or A is negative, B is positive, doesn't matter if they're any different, if they're opposite signs of one another, then you always get a negative answer. Doesn't matter the size of A and the size of B, you don't have to worry about that. So that's why I say multiplying numbers is actually easier than adding them, because you don't have to worry about all that stuff. So that is the rule. We're going to leave it up on the board, and now we're going to do a bunch of problems, just to kind of give you give you practice. And I promise you that with just a few minutes you'll understand and be able to, under, to do these very, very easily. So 2 times 2 is, you know, third grade math. You have a positive number times a positive number. So according to the chart, you're going to get a positive number, and the answer is 4. So you get positive 4. So I'll start with an easy one, right? What if you have 2 times negative 2? Now, notice here that in the first problem, I put a dot here. That means multiplication. Um, but in the second problem, I put parentheses around the negative 2. This also means multiplication. So don't get too surprised if you start seeing problems with parentheses indicating multiplication. I could put a dot there, but it just looks a, a little bit weird to have 2 with a dot and then a negative 2. It's hard to read sometimes when you if you don't quite see the dot. So it's a little more common to write it with parentheses when you have negative numbers in there. But Either way, it means multiplication. So here you have a positive times a negative. And according to the chart, when you have different signs, the answer will always be negative. So in this case, you multiply 2 times 2, which is 4, but the answer is going to be negative 4 because the signs are different. Okay? What if you had um, negative 2 being the first number um, times 2? Well, again, the signs are different. They're not the same, so anytime they're different, the answer is going to be negative, and the number is 2 times 2, which is 4. So you see how easy this is. You just multiply the numbers together. The sign is just going to depend on if you're multiplying uh, some different signs together or if you're multiplying the same signs together. And then finally, our final guy here, negative 2 times negative 2, 
of course it's going to be 4, and the answer is actually going to be positive because if you look back up at your chart, negative times negative always gives you positive. So the signs match here, so we get a positive number. The signs match here, we get a positive number. The signs are different here, and they're also different here, so we get negative answers for those. Now with the basics out of the way, we're going to crank through a, a few more of these guys just to give you a little more practice. None of these are hard or difficult to understand. We're just getting practice here. So now we have negative 8 times negative 5. So what is 8 times 5? It is 40. And we have the same signs there, which may, uh, according to the chart, means that we have a positive answer. So the answer is positive 40. Next problem, 3 times negative 9. What's 9 times 3 or 3 times 9? It's 27, right? Um, but these are opposite signs from one another, so it's going to be negative 27. Very simple. You don't have to think about which number is larger, absolute value, any of that stuff. That's only for addition and subtraction. You have to worry about that. All right, now what if you're multiplying three numbers together? For instance, let's say you have 4 times negative 3 times negative 2. Don't let this... Uh, confuse you. When you have multiplication like this, you have parentheses here and here, but there's nothing to do inside of this parenthesis or inside of this one. You, there's nothing to add. So all this is me saying is 4 times negative 3. The result of this is then multiplied by negative 2. So you have to kind of work in sequence. You work left to right, multiplying left to right. So first we do 4 times negative 3. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Why is it negative? Because those signs are different because the, the 4 and the negative 3 had a different sign, so we get a negative 12, but we still need to multiply by negative 2, so we keep it along for the ride like this. And then, down here, what is 12 times 2? It's 24, but the signs are multiplying. Negative times negative is always going to give us positive because the signs match, so positive 24 is the answer. So you always want to work when you have just multiplication, later on when we have just division, um, there's nothing else to do but the multiplication. You work left to right. So you do the first two numbers, get the answer, and then you resolve the second two numbers and get the answer. If you start trying to do too many things at once, the signs will confuse you. So you have to kind of go in sequence. This is exactly how I solve my own problems. I'm showing you exactly what I do when I solve my own problems. So what if you had, for instance, negative 1 times negative 3 times positive 4? So you have to go in sequence. So first we say negative 1 times 3, uh, which is going to give us positive 3 because the signs match, right? But then we have to multiply by 4. Now we have two positive numbers we multiply together, so the answer is positive 12. So here we had the negative times negative, which gave us positive according to the rule right here. And then the 3 times 4 just gave us 12. All right, so we just have a couple more in this section just to give us a little more practice. So we'll go over here and just kind of work 2 times negative 7 times 0. The first two numbers, 2 times negative 7, is going to be negative 14 because uh, the signs are opposite of one another, so it's a negative, and 2 times 7 is 14. We multiply by 0, but then you look at this, any number multiplied by 0, whether it's negative or positive, always just gives you 0. So the answer to that, you could kind of tell from the beginning, you're multiplying by 0, it's always going to give you an answer of 0. Alright, what if we have negative 2 times negative 3 times negative 4. So on the left here, we work here. Negative 2 times negative 3. Negative times negative, the signs match, so it's positive 6. But we still have to multiply by negative 4. Now we have two signs that are opposite. So because they don't match, we get a negative answer, and 6 times 4 is 24. So the answer is negative 24, just like that. Our final problem for this section, anyway, is going to be negative 6 times negative 1 times negative 7 times negative 10. So you have a bunch of negative numbers uh, multiplied together, so the way to do it is you handle the first two first, and then we do the, handle the third one and the fourth one. So the si negative 6 times negative 1, negative times negative, they, the signs match, so that gives us positive, and the number is 6, because 1 times 6 is 6, so we have the negative 7 and the negative 10 that we still have to do. Now we turn our attention to the 6 times negative 7. The signs do not match, so it will be a negative. 6 times 7 is 42, and we still have to multiply by negative 10. So now we have a negative times a negative. The signs match, so we're going to get a positive answer. 42 times 10 is 420. Positive 420. That's the final answer. So again, this little chart here you know, you can write it down if you want, but ultimately in order to multiply, and later on the same rules will happen for division, 
if the signs match, the answer is positive. If the signs are opposite, the signs always negative. And you see how easy it is to handle these. It's actually much easier than adding or subtracting numbers. So make sure you can do this. And then follow me on to the next section. We're going to get a little more practice with multiplying things together in algebra. And you'll be well on your way to mastering this skill.